Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Uh, Welcome back, everybody. You know, we can have our best laid plans for life, but a lot of times things are going to crop up, things that we weren't expecting. And sometimes there is a financial challenge with those things that pop up. Question, how do you prepare for those situations? Those call them financial emergencies. This is all in her wheelhouse as she helps people, especially minority communities, take control of their finances, work with their wealth to get the best outcome, secure a better, brighter future today. It's about things we weren't expecting with Latanya Stewart, our professional of the year and the owner of 3B Financial. Hey, Latanya, how's it going? This is going well. Steve, how is it going with you? Very well. Very well. I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this. It's, it's one of those things that you don't hear come up in conversation. You know, people just take it for granted that, yeah, you know what? I don't have to worry about that. Things will be taken care of. But financial storms are going to happen and we're going to have to weather them. So what's, what's, our first, what's our first step here? Start to plan for the unexpected because to your point, life is going to show up and it's going to happen. And it's something we never planned for. And it's one of those things, and I think you and I have touched on this before, creating that, some people call it a rainy day fund, but for me it's that emergency fund. Mm. Because you always have money set aside when those hiccups in life show up. You know, it's easy to say, well, just save. (laughs) Just save, you never know. But, you know, create that rainy day fund. Okay, easier said than done. Maybe... Obviously, we need to make sure that we have funds available for those emergencies, but what are some of the ways that we can save where it doesn't hurt so much? One of the things I would say is put it in your immediate budget for the month. Every month, every pay period, set money aside. Even, I mean, we're coming up on the end of the year, which means tax filing is right around the corner. For those that get tax refunds, Most people take it and they splurge and do fun things for themselves, but that's a good way to also jumpstart that savings because it's kind of extra money we didn't expect to get, you know, if we're blessed enough to get a refund from the federal or the state. What would you suggest in terms of those savings? Would you say create a separate savings account so now it's over here to the side where you're intentional about um, the money that you put in there? One thing I like to tell my clients to do is most of us, or I'm say probably 99.9% of us, do direct deposit. Mm. When you get that direct deposit check for your, you know, your earnings, create a money marketing, a savings account, just for that rainy day emergency fund. So when you get paid, it automatically goes. There's no extra step on your part to have to make sure you transfer the money it automatically happens. And then it becomes kind of out of sight, out of mind, because that's not the account you're using every day. And when you get this statement in the mail, or even when you look at it online, it's like, oh, yeah, I did set up that savings. And you'll begin to see that balance grow. You know, ever since we talked last time about uh, credit scores, this pops into my head that you may want to work on your credit score now Gosh forbid something happens, and then you need a loan. You're going to want the best possible rate on that loan, right? Absolutely. Hmm. Uh, What about insurance? You know, thoughts on that? That's a good one. That's a good one. You know, Um, I'm guessing our younger generation probably doesn't have life insurance plans. Point. I know I'm one that came from that rule of thumb my mom did, and. I have one, you know, and then my daughter has one. But even when you think of insurance, you should also consider estate planning. It's one of those things that we don't want to talk about, but it's 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 inevitable at some point. And even, and I'm going to go there, uh, the unexpected, pre-planning a funeral. So you're saving because you're locking in certain numbers, but at the same time, you're also taking the burden off your loved ones once you do that. Another reason why I like estate planning, wills, and trust, it takes the guesswork out of those left behind. Mm. Because when our loved ones transition, we're, you know, we're sad, we're mourning, but those that have properties and assets, now we have to deal with those things. 
and I can speak from personal experience. Um, I lost my mom in 22, but I was blessed enough that we did all of her planning, and I called her attorney, and he was like, well, Tanya, I don't want to hear from you for 30 days. He said, do what you need to do, and he said, call me back. And for me, that was a huge relief because I didn't have to think, oh, my, the house, the car, the, all these things. He was like, no, call me back. And that allowed me to sit and be with my feelings, be with my family, you know, make her funeral arrangements. We did those things. And then I was able to come back and deal with what comes after that, which was the estate. Sure. You need time to process all of it. Uh, that was probably the best advice anybody could give at that point. Mm. And it was a blessing, but he said many people don't do it. And the unfortunate part is family members fight. Yep. Um, he, you know, gave me some examples of probate court. And somebody's like, oh, well, mom left me the jewelry. Dad was supposed to leave me the car. But when it's not in writing, unfortunately, it, it has to go to court. And this might be mom, dad, sister, brother, parents, but you have to go to court to prove, yes, I am who I am, to even get the assets back. Because without that piece of paper in place, technically the state owns it. And people don't think about that part. Or some people don't even realize that part. Because we don't want to. (laughs) We just want to put that, and I get it, and I get it. But it's the reality, it's life, and what we're talking about today, preparation. Things are going to happen. What What about an emergency credit card? The concept of having one on the standby where you've got full credit on it, is it, is it, does it make sense or is there a repercussion of having a, a credit card out there that you're not using at this time? It's not, but when I went through bankruptcy, my consumer credit counselor, she told me to take that emergency credit card, put it in a Ziploc bag, fill it with water, and put it in the freezer. What that made me do was like, is it an emergency or is it not? Because what I had to go through to get it, I had to get it off the freezer and thaw out the card. And it was a way to keep me from running to that car to what I thought was an emergency, but it was probably a want. Well, this is a really good point, because in my mind, that card's only coming out for an emergency, but how do we define an emergency? It's a tough one. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, situation I had last year was... It was determined that the subframe on my car rusted and needed to be replaced. My car was at that t- you know ten years old. I'm like, what? I mean, it's not like a jeep on the beach. The frame is rusted. Couldn't believe it. Apparently, with this model, that's a that's a challenge. Uh, you know, it's documented. I see it online. Uh, manufac- car manufacturer wouldn't do anything about it. Just yep, not our problem. Oh yeah. Uh, couldn't even get the subframe from the dealership. They weren't even, they were backlogged. A known problem. Bought it on eBay. Can't make this up. Fortunately, I have a car friend. He replaced it. That plus new brakes, which I needed in rotors. That, that's originally what the plan was. Uh, rent a car, all of that, because it's a major job. Uh, he gave me a break. We're talking like close to four grand. Wasn't planning on yeah. that. Um, fortunately, I had some funds. All good to go there. But if I didn't, you know, would that come under the, I need to use my emergency credit card to take care of this? It does. Okay. Because you didn't have it readily available anywhere else. But the what we have to keep in mind is now we need to look at what are our credit limits on those cards. Because if you have an emergency card, that's great. But what if the credit limit was only, let's say, $2,000? Right. Now we got to figure out where we're going to get this other two from. And when we think about credit, having a as they say, good credit score helps because that increases the credit limit. Right, yeah. Because depending on your score, that drives, you know, your credit limit. And then when you look at your spending, what's the available credit on the card? It's mm-hmm. kind of twofold. Which brings me to a question I've always wondered about. When the credit card company loves you uh, and they want to show their love by increasing your credit limit, uh, aside from you Hitting the credit limit, are there any repercussions? Anything that we need to worry about? Get to income ratio. Um, when you do it, and sometimes they'll do it like, hey, you've been a good customer. They automatically raise it without you even asking. Right. 
And I've had that happen. It's like, oh, wow, thank you. Because typically they will look at your income. Has your income increased? Okay, you've been paying your credit card bill on time. They'll increase it. One of the things with that I would say is we still got to monitor the spending. And and you and I (laughs) trying to go back to this, the want versus need. Um, Because some people, and you and I have had this conversation, get the point. We use our credit card for various things. It's like you could use it for the grocery shopping, the gas. Even some people, you know, their mortgage if they can. It still goes back to paying your bills on time and paying it in full. Don't use it as like, okay, I'm just going to pay a little bit because you have the interest tied to it. So when we're using it for everyday things, you end up spending more on that item than you normally would have if you just pay cash for it. Mm. it it's so funny. I get those credit card. I guess I pay. You know, I pay my balance on time, and so they raise the uh, the limit. So I was wondered if there was uh, those repercussions. Rainy day situation coming up. Let's say you've got a um, you know unexpected expense, borrowing from your savings. Notice I use the word borrowing. Um, is that the right mentality? Thoughts on savings and those emergencies? If you're going to borrow, think about it from borrowing from yourself. If you borrow from self, now you have to pay self back. Yet again, setting up is like, okay, I borrowed $500 from my savings, from myself. Now let me create the repayment plan to pay myself back. So think of it as a loan from a bank. Same mm-hmm. concept. If you're borrowing it from you, you have to pay you back and create a monthly amount that you're comfortable with to replace that 500 that you borrowed from yourself. You can't cheat yourself because <laughs> the, <laughs> the bank wouldn't allow it. You shouldn't allow it as well. Um, in terms of savings, what are your thoughts there? Obviously, a lot of savings accounts, there's not a lot of you know, big return on that. It's just a place to put your money uh, that's safer. What about short-term CDs? Now, if an emergency crops up, you have to write, let's say it's a one-year term. You can't really touch that money. Um, but we, we are talking about savings. So what are your thoughts on, on short-term CDs? Worthwhile? Good idea or not? For me, no, if they're a long-term savings plan, because to your point, a lot of them, when you do them, you can get one for three months, six months, but typically you can't touch them. If you do, there's a penalty. Mm. So if you're looking to grow your money long-term, like, and it's, I would say it's probably a good way, and you and I talked about this, let's say holidays are coming up. You know holidays are coming. Using a nine-month CD, like starting in January would be good because you've saved up the money for your holiday shopping. I don't really look at it as a good method for emergencies because you need it right now and you need something that's readily available to you without having to pay a penalty to get your own money back. Yeah. You know, something, Latanya, popped in my mind, and I, it, it may sound ridiculous, but it comes under the category of and when emergency strikes. And if you have a financial emergency, you're probably going to need this, but... Keeping your records, your documents, all of that important stuff in a safe spot and one where you can access it immediately and one where you know where it is. It's easy to get to. Um, I feel we don't we don't think about those things. And if you have a financial emergency, you probably need some kind of paperwork. Yes, and it's one of the things I share with my clients. A lot of people aren't doing it. Record keepers, mm-hmm. especially now in the modern age of digital. Yep. A lot of us say things one lighting, quote unquote, in the cloud, and I use that with air quotes. I still believe in paper copies. I'm just kind of, as they say, old school. Me too. <laughs> I'm right there with you. You're, I, I'm a geek. I have my phone, everything. I, I, I love technology. I'm staring at, uh, let's see, uh, probably about 11 post-it notes in front of me because if, <laughs> if it's in your face... You can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. Agreed. I mean, digital is good. Sure. You know, your phone, various apps, they're great. Even calendar reminders, they're great in the phone. But a lot of us hit ignore or snooze, yep. and then we'll just turn them off and stop looking. Yep. But like you said, that, it's something about pen and paper, that tangible, you're writing it down, and you able to see it is more of a better reminder because then you don't tend to forget as much as you do those reminders, because we get so busy, life is lifing, we just hit ignore. Mm. Or we keep snoozing it, and we don't go back and look at those reminders that we set for ourselves. 
Well, let's face it. We'll always say, I'll get to that later. Yes, there it is again, reminding me. Yeah, we'll do it. Let's be honest. Um, In the time we have left, other things to prepare for financial challenges, emergencies, what would you suggest? Find an accountability partner. Hmm. Find someone in your life, whether it's your partner, family member, friend, somebody that you trust, wants to share your finances with, to help you remain accountable financially. Because when somebody else is reminding you, it's like, Steve, did you take care of X, Y, Z? It brings it back to your mind for you. It's like, oh, yeah. Well, Tanya, I forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. It's a way to help keep us accountable. Because sometimes a party of one isn't enough. And it's one of the things I do for my clients. Sometimes I'm sending out email reminders. It's like, this week, you know, you were supposed to do X, Y, Z. Did you do it? And sometimes I'll get the response like, it's like, no, but LaTanya, thank you for that reminder. So having someone in your life that can help hold you accountable so that you can reach the financial goals that you want to, one being that emergency fund. Mm. Out of everything we've talked about, it's my opinion that that's one of the most important things, to have somebody that's accountable. Yeah, so even somebody like you that, that deals, is dealing with your finances. Let's say somebody brought you on board to change things up make things much better in terms of the approach, but then you're also floating out there for the emergency fund. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Are you still putting money into that? Just checking up on you. The accountability, I think, is key because the rest of us, sure, we can do the direct deposit going directly into that separate savings account. There it is, the emergency fund. Um, It's very easy to shut that off, very easy to dip into that. Having somebody remind you of its importance I believe it's key. It's like it's like going on a diet. You don't have somebody talking in your ear. What's going to happen eventually? Yes. You know? Absolutely. Hmm. Uh, final thoughts for today. Anything stand out for you in terms of uh, planning? Let's all get comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay. Finances are uncomfortable, and it's time we, we get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Let's pull our head out of the sand, pull out all that paperwork, and get our finances in front of us so we can see it. Yeah. So true, because we know that I don't think there's anybody on the planet that can honestly say, yeah, I'm perfect. I'm in good shape. Everything's exactly right. I've, I've looked at every penny. You probably haven't. You probably could save money here over there, have a better plan for, for your savings and all of that, and probably expect Expect the unexpected. Life is full of change. Nobody, most of us don't really like change, but it's coming. There's going to be something going on. So uh, why why have to worry about it financially? Because you hadn't planned for it, right? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. Uh, somebody wants to work with you on all of this, not just the emergency planning, uh, but anything leading up to that to make sure that, you know, somebody is financially sound. How does that work with you, LaTanya? The best way to reach me is email which is info at the letter, I keep saying letter, number three, the letter B, financial.co, or they can go straight to my website, www.3bfinancial.co, and there's an information sheet. Put in your information. It even has a space to put in the question, concern that you want answered, and I will be the one that would get back to you. Awesome. Uh, I didn't ask this. I shared my uh, almost $4,000 unplanned car story. Do you remember the last financial challenge that popped up out of nowhere for you? Um, I am currently dealing with it today. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you for your transparency. Uh, I know that you're having some work done around your place. Is that is is that part of it? So, long story short, the house next door to me got purchased. No retainer wall. The neighbors took it out. And during COVID, I had pavers put in. Well, part of my yard went downhill. Um, Much back and forth with my neighbors since January. Finally have paid their company out. But the blessing is, it is my neighbor's very expensive bill to pay. They had to do 50% up front and 50% upon completion. So I hope they prepared for that emergency because it's pricey. Wow. Um How is it determined that it's their responsibility, or is it kind of just a no-brainer? It's on their property. It was a no-brainer, and they agreed. They said, we made the mistake. We're going to pay to make it correct. I don't think they expected the price tag. (laughs) 
Wow. So this is something that was more than five thousand dollars for them. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, thank you for sharing that. So interesting. Uh, and I, I have to say, it sounds like you have some pretty solid neighbors there for admitting. Hey, we're going to take care of it. Uh, even if it, it, the, it was it was less, it still sounds like it's their responsibility. But either way you look at it, wasn't planned for them. Wasn't planned. Absolutely. Wow. All the more reason to plan. Uh, thank you for today. Once again, website to remind everybody, 3B, 3B financial.co, not .com, .co. Latanya, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Steve. Have a wonderful week. You too. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad. How do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.